the best defense is a stronger you. Mm. It's personal development. Could be me, could be Les Brown, could be a, a YouTube video, a TEDx, a course through a community college. Continue to upgrade your skills because then you're not you're not waiting around going, oh my God, I'm losing my job. You're gonna have more opportunities because you're more valuable in the market space. Hi, and welcome to the 91 Day Podcast. And today I am absolutely blessed to be talking to Tony Rubleski of Mind Capture Group. And uh, I've known Tony for years. I've heard him speak on a number of occasions. And I am just so honored that Tony accepted my invitation to be on the podcast today. Tony, welcome. And, and thank you so much for taking time out of your day today. You're welcome, Jonathan. I appreciate the invite. We'll, we'll have a good time. Absolutely. So let's jump right into the big news before we do anything else. You just launched a brand new book. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, it's a book called Positive Disruption, Volume 2. And uh, it's book number eight in the series, Jonathan. And boy, I tell you what, uh, it's always a fun experience to write a book. And some days it's not fun. But when you finally launch that book out there, you're like, okay, a lot of authors think, all right, the work's over. No, it's just beginning. So um, we're very delighted. We December 7th. Actions have been very good. We've had some people order the book. You've got a copy. So thank you for um, picking up a copy on Amazon. And I think yours will arrive any day now. So very, very excited. And when you promote a book, um, I think a lot of people have this conception that people just beat a path to your door. But um, this is about positivity in a world right now that's very dark, very negative. I hate to say that to start the interview, but it's not easy out there for a lot of small and mid-sized businesses and a lot of creative types to get their word out there. So we work very hard to practice what we teach. The book is really designed to have people look at the world differently each day and more importantly, go inward to their own inner talents mm -hmm. each day. In a world that's got nine second attention spans, Jonathan, it's very unique to say, I'm going to shut all these devices off. I'm going to grab a pen and paper. And I'm going to really focus and meditate and think and ask better questions. So um, the book is volume two, obviously, is advertised. Volume one did very well, and we self-published it. So this time we have Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and other folks that are promoting that book, which is kind of nice. Congratulations. I loved the first book. It was great. And I Thank absolutely you. love the premise of what you're talking about because – I, I, I can't agree more with you on what you're saying as you know, you listen to peers and associates and family and everybody around, everybody seems to have a reason to think that the world is uh, going, you know, where in a handbasket. And I think, you know, uh, just as I've said on social media recently, my motto for 2023 is the future is bright. It's what we make of it. If, if we just can decide yep. how, that future is going to look. And we can control huge, huge aspects of our future. We're not just sitting here along for the ride. And I'm anticipating here reading some of that when your book arrives, and I'm so excited for that. One of the things I know that a lot of the business owners that are watching the podcast may be interested in, they've thought of writing a book. Could you share just a little bit, Tony, about the process now that you've written multiple books and everything else? What's that process look like in as a business owner, as a, a, a speaker and, and, a, and a trainer, is it something you would recommend for business people to do? Is, it, is writing a book a good idea from your perspective? Well, having written a few, I'm a little biased, Jonathan. I think it's a great question. I don't usually get asked this, but I think if the business owner here, or she wants to have even more expert positioning, they should do writing. Now, it doesn't always have to start out with being a, a book to itself. You could do a white paper, you could do a special report. I know in your space, the IT, there's a lot of white papers. Um, that yep. to me, the formations, when you do several of those to have a book, and it could be a shorter ebook, it could be a longer form book. But my whole adage is if you want to do this is it's much easier than ever. The challenge is, is to set a deadline. Um, everyone says, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'll get to it when the kids are growing up, when I have time on the holidays. I say, look, that's your procrastination or your doubt in your mind telling you that, oh, it's going to be hard. I'll just keep waiting. And as we wait, we never get to it. So for me, uh, when I wrote, wrote the first Mind Capture 20 plus years ago, we didn't have YouTube. There was no social media. The Internet was brand new. And I look at this and go, wow, it's gotten so much easier um, to find resources. But it's also gotten easier to get really confused. Some people are professional researchers. They analyze and feel the paralysis by analysis. They'll research videos. Mm -hmm. They'll read books on it. 
start writing. So the best advice I ever got uh, was actually from John Grisham. It sits above my desk here and it says, the best advice I ever got was to write one page per day. Unless you write one page, nothing happens. So I look at the experts such as John Grisham that have written tons of books. He's got like 300 plus million books in print and say, many times the simplicity trips people up because they go down this hole of complexity, feel like they're doing something when they actually have to sit down and write or type up a page at a time. So I'm a big believer, yes. The, the answer is a profound yes, but start in incremental ways of writing. Because if we look at it and go, I'm going to write a book in three months, many times it's such a daunting task that people, they quit within two or three days. I'm not trying to be negative here. It's just having watched writers that finally get their book over the finish line. Mm -hmm. Some of them take years because they, they just keep waiting or they have a partially finished manuscript. Can't tell you how many people I know still have a manuscript that I see at a seminar or a training, like they're still working on it. It's been six years, eight years. I have a friend of speaking business who I love doing his book for 10 years, hasn't got it done yet. And I'm thinking, wow. I'll call him Joe because he might watch this. He, he might see the interview and he's like, Joe, I don't even ask anymore. I don't want to get mad or feel awkward, but I'm like, maybe somebody will shock me and get his book done. So. I, I love that advice of John Grisham, write one page a day. I think that that, it has far more value than just even creating the content, just that discipline that that brings. Uh, great advice. Really appreciate you sharing that. Uh, Tony, you and I originally met through the Chamber of Commerce. You were just, you were speaking at an event and doing some group training. Um, is that still an important part of your business? And so can you tell us a little bit about how you help businesses through that? Well, it's still a big part. And, uh, you know, for about a year and a half, Jonathan, at the beginning of COVID, it disappeared and it went more online with Zoom. And uh, I like to do the live interaction. I do a lot of Zoom training and the technology is cool. I mean, what we're doing now, um, time and distance is no longer an issue. The technology allows Absolutely. these. So what I'm seeing as we head into 2023 is more groups are saying, hey, we've got to get live training, in-person trainings back. So in January alone, I, I had to Northern Michigan for a, a private client, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Seattle, Las Vegas. So I'm delighted to be on the road again. I enjoy it. Some people don't, and that's fine. There's a variety of ways to train. But what I'm seeing is people miss the human connection, Jonathan. We met at a oh, chamber. Absolutely. And um, I like to network too, but I also know that there's new tools that were really launched out of the pandemic, such as you know Zoom and StreamYard and other applications for digital. So we're living almost in the Jetsons and Star Trek now, which is kind of cool. And uh, the old throwback in me at, at age 50, I'm a Gen Xer, likes a lot of the in-person stuff still. So absolutely, there's demand. And what we're seeing now is a lot of meeting planners are freaking out going, oh, my gosh, I need to get a speaker. Or, you know, we need to bring some in-house sales training or someone to inspire and motivate us. And really, the core three sets, I'm, I'm trying to think of which session you saw me originally, is I do a lot of referral training. How do you get more referral right, business? Yep. A lot of mindset training, you know, positive disruption is very much a mindset and a spirit set book. And then the third area that I do is, is on leadership, which to me is effective salespeople are usually effective leaders. And sometimes you have great leaders that maybe aren't as good at selling products and services, but they can sell their ideas and motivate people. So those three talks are also based on a lot of my books and writing over the last decade primarily. Well, and I honestly, I know I've seen you speak on multiple times. I am positive that one was on leadership, um, but it yeah. was pre-COVID the last time I saw you speak. So I'm not 100% sure what the others were. Uh, but let me tell you, if you're watching the podcast and you're looking for a dynamic speaker who's going to get your, your crowd motivated, they're going to bring everybody back. Uh, Tony's an amazing speaker. And um, I say that just from a personal testimonial. Uh, Tony does an amazing job and is really relatable to the groups that you're talking to. So seriously, um, reach out to Tony. He does a great job. Learn more about what he does. You won't be upset about that. Um, well, Jonathan, thank you. I'm, I'm glad we, we should be taping this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Much appreciated. Talk to me a little bit about the leadership tra training in particular. So when you're working and doing that type of training, what, well, I don't want to give away the speech. Let's, let's save that. But talk to me about some of the, the things that you have found over the years that are really inspiring to people in that leadership training. 
Well, a couple key nuggets stick out of that. And then I haven't, uh, this is fun to go backward and talk about the book on leadership around called Trailblazers. Yep. And it was, it was a chronicles of what I call 12 trailblazers who beat the odds and influence millions. There's the subtitle. And these particular um, 12 were picked from over about 100 interviews that I've done the last 15 years. At least I have a paid newsletter where people would get my audio of the month interview. And I mm-hmm. um, wouldn't say it was a pure podcast because it was paid content that was walled off. You didn't, you couldn't find it online. And some of the interviews were never released except to private clients. But I look for patterns. What are the successful clues? Tony Robbins says success leaves clues. Mm-hmm. I said in the book, book Trailblazers, we reveal clues. What were the characteristics that we called? And, there, and there's a couple of them that really jump out. I think what audiences love the most when we are, are brought in to give that talk is the fact that persistence and not quitting. And particularly the last couple of years, there are a lot of people you keep hearing about quiet quitting and workers don't want to work. I don't agree with that 100%, Jonathan. I think that they're uninspired. Or a lot of the workforce feel like the leadership's even listening to them. And it'll be interesting as we go into 2023, as we take this, what groups are going to bring me back in to talk about trailblazer leadership? Because I've said this in some of my talks recently and on other interviews. I've said, look, we saw a couple things amongst many in business during the pandemic. Lack of leadership. I saw lots of CEOs from big companies, mid-sized little to nonprofit directors didn't do anything, Jonathan. They kind of sat in their office and frankly didn't do much. And they wonder why a lot of their employees left, why a lot of their employees are resentful, don't want to put any extra time in. To me, it starts from the very top. If the leader, he or she is not leading by example, they're going to set the tone of the behavior and what's acceptable in the organization. Now, Some leaders did very well. They were adjusting on the dime because there was so much out of their control that every week there was a new, like, how are we going to adjust to this? What about these numbers? What is HR saying? And and I want to go in and say something kind of boldly right now that I think a lot of leaders that are listening to this and even fans of mine is leaders, we're looking for you. Where are you? And if you step up right now, this is a great time to shine. And also if you're the CEO is, they're going to go into this new year. You're going to have to be thinking more about marketing and sales focus. And I'm going to tick off some HR people that may hear this. And I have some HR clients. HR right now has been running the house for two years. Yeah. And when you see more marketing dollars or, or budget put to HR and not to marketing and sales, I get concerned. I believe that everybody's in marketing, Jonathan, whether they choose to I admit it or not. I don't care if you're a, you think you're a customer service rep, your manager, your production. Every day you have to market, you have to show up on time, you have to sell your ideas. And where we're going in 23, we're going to be in a recession. I, I, not with the, the Federal Reserve, but I meet with enough leaders telling me, and it's all over the internet, that there is a trend we're going to have a tougher rodeo. What will happen? Those that know how to lead more effectively have an advantage, number one. And those that know how to market and lead will have a very decided advantage to survive and thrive, but not a 23. A lot of businesses aren't going to make it. They took customers for granted. They aren't training their employees. And here's something that concerns me if I get a referral. If they're losing a lot of employees, sometimes I won't do the training for them because they're not serious. If they mm-hmm. keep worrying about losing customers, but they're losing a lot of their staff, if that correlation exists, I don't know if I can help them because it starts with the leadership and the culture up top. And if it's not present, sometimes they want me to come in and save them. I can't do it. On the positive side, usually the groups right now that are booking me into 23 aren't worried about budgets. They're saying, hey, we train no matter what. We will find budget dollars to put you into, and we believe in our people. We're going to back it up with training. Um, That, to me, is a serious commitment. A lot of companies are pulling back. They're kind of, they're going to wait, wait, wait. They're not going to invest in their people. You're going to have the same problem, Jonathan. They're going to keep quitting. Absolutely. And I just say, uh, how long do you want to ride this thing out? If it takes a year or two, do you have enough cash reserves? Do you want to lose your key customers because you're, you're, you're not supporting them with the right staff? Are you going to burn out the staff you have? And I just get very frustrated sometimes when I see like CFOs that are like, well, why are we paying for all this soft skills, this woo-woo training? Because it works. It, well, when exactly. You see like Disney is investing in training. Um, companies have been around 50, 100 years that, 
invest in training constantly. It doesn't just have to be marketing or mindset. Those are my wheelhouse, but maybe it's OSHA training. Maybe it's disc personality profiling. If you're not investing in, in your people, they're going to go to companies that will. And the top talent now has lots of options. So I just look at this, this interview and the timeliness of it heading into New Year, because I hope it falls on someone's ears that's maybe questioning, why are we doing things the way we've always have done them? Why don't we try something new? Why don't we get back to more training? Because we cut back for two years because people weren't in the office. They didn't feel comfortable. Well, I got news for you. People are going to have to go back to the office next year. You know, pending, hopefully there's no more pandemics, but a lot of employers are saying those days are over. You're going to have to start showing up and meeting face-to-face and getting to the office. So I know I'm on a rant here, Jonathan. You're doing great. It frustrates me. It frustrates me how many good companies are being held hostage like handcuffs by the HR department or their in-house counsel that are literally taking the drive, the initiative, and the ideas out of their team. And they're literally repelling their staff and their customers because they're too, they're too uptight. Um, they're not allowing mm-hmm. people, people in the organization. Well, and it's, it's one of the reasons, Tony, I'm actually so excited to get your new book is I, I believe the next two years are going to be rough. Absolutely. But I also believe that they're ripe for opportunity if your mindset is right. And I think it's a great opportunity for us as business leaders to really step up and show our teams what it's like to have a positive mindset, what it's like to take advantage of the opportunities and to think outside the box. Because with upheaval, which is arguably where we're headed or are at, depending on your perspective, there becomes opportunity. Every change brings about opportunity. And we have the choice, as you mentioned, to be like those COOs that sat back and just watched and and to see what was going to happen. Or we can take the lead. And being a sales and marketing guy, which I am, I'm I'm the guy that wants to jump in there, take the lead, take some risk, and go, look, there's a great opportunity to grow through this. Uh, I just finished uh, a session with my business coach literally 10 minutes prior to this. And there were about probably 40 of us on the call. It's part of an agency program. In, and all but maybe one or two are expecting tr- double-digit growth next year. And it's because of the mm-hmm. fact we're all going in wide-eyed. There's going to be challenges. There's going to be issues. But there's also going to be opportunity because every one of those clouds brings with it an opportunity that as a smart business leader, we can take advantage of to help our clients, to help our team, and to help the community that we're in just all the way around. It's a win-win. So I'm, I'm so excited about the new book. Yep. You've got a promo. That's my, Thanks. my soapbox. I'll get off my soapbox, but you've got a promo for the new book. <laughs> and we're going to be releasing this podcast. I believe with just enough time for people to get in. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Because yeah. there's some pretty cool promos here. Well, thank you. And let me real quick and I'll come in to answer that is um, congratulate you, Jonathan, on coaching. Um, you invest in yourself and you, you don't wait for opportunities, you go and create them. Absolutely. So it doesn't surprise me that your group is growing because you have the right mindset of not being fear-based and, and being overly cautious. Now, when I talk with clients and say, hey, I understand you have systems and operations that work, you don't gut the whole thing. What I'm saying is how do you supercharge this thing versus being too conservative? And that's where some people go, well, you can't just abandon everything and go all in. I get that. Um, there is some balance required. Now, going back to this contest, it involves someone making news right now, along with a company called Ticketmaster. So um, <laughs> maybe you're able to Ticketmaster, but I'm going to hold up a magazine here, and it might be a little reversed here. But Taylor Swift, ironically, as we record this interview right now, it's her birthday today. Uh, she turned 33 today, and we had some fun with that. But the contest is simple. Ticketmaster a few weeks ago, the short version is they put her tickets on sale for her fans, a pre-concert. She's doing her first U.S. tour in five years. Uh, I'm not a massive, massive fan of her music. I like it, but I'm not like, you know, posters on the wall. Okay, I'm more of a rock and roll flavor kind of guy. But her tickets sold out literally like within a couple of hours. They were expecting 1.5 million people to pre-sale her big fans. They got 15 million hits. It shut Ticketmaster down and people were rightfully upset. Now, with that, I kept hearing about it in the news. I thought, how do you take a negative disruption and turn it into a positive disruption? So I'm a big guy that likes to have fun when I launch books out and in general have a good time each day because business is stressful enough. So I partnered with a friend of mine down in South Bend. His name is Mark Turner. 
South Bend Chocolate Company, 31 years in business. He's like the Willy Wonka of, of Indiana. And I said, Mark, I called him right before Thanksgiving. I said, I got this crazy idea about giving away like golden tickets, but Taylor Swift because they're the hottest thing on the internet right now and her fans are just upset. Ironically, the week we launched the book, their fans, many of the fans in her um, database sued Ticketmaster in a class action lawsuit. So I said, Mark, this thing's got some legs. And why don't we make this negative sort of very upsetting thing a positive? So what we agreed to do, we went 50-50. We didn't get underwritten free tickets from a big company or Ticketmaster. We both went with our own dime and we bought two pairs of tickets for opening night for a U.S. tour in Glendale, Arizona, March 17th. So we're going to give away chocolates. Obviously, he's like the Willy Wonky on Chocolate Factory, Jonathan. We're going to give away two pairs of tickets and they're going to give away some positive disruption books. So we said, look, there's thousands of books put out every week. What do we do to stand out and be different? But let's have some fun with it. So this contest slash giveaway runs through New Year's Eve. And essentially, there's no purchase necessary. If someone's interested, they go to our blog page, which I know you guys will put our links. Check out the rules. If someone buys a book, again, they don't have to. They forward their email of confirmation from Amazon, Barnes & Noble to us. And then they're entered in the drawing. And the drawing, we're going to wait till mid-January because we also have a mailing component. I know old school direct mail, you mail in a three by five card of your favorite positive quote. That's another way to enter the contest. So we want to have fun. We want to make sure that serious fans of her music find out about it. And someone's going to win. These tickets were not cheap, Jonathan. They were thousands of dollars for I opening. Bet. So we look at it and say, let's, no matter how this thing shakes out, if we get Thousands and thousands of entries, great. If we don't, we're still going to have fun. It got picked up on the newswires a couple days ago, and it made on Yahoo Finance a couple days ago. So the word is spreading. But again, this contest had too many timely things line up that we said, look, why don't we jump on this, have a good time. Uh, we'll share it with her fans. We have a lot of my fans, Jonathan, that are like, you know, they have kids that are into Taylor Swift. They're sharing the message out. And uh, having the contest run for two and a half, three weeks, it gives it more shelf life where people can talk about, it, especially over Christmas and New Year's. And, you know, obviously December 31st is the cutoff date, but we'll see what happens. And I'm looking ahead thinking how fun it's going to be to award these tickets, especially if they're a diehard Taylor Swift fan. And uh, we'll do the drawing live and all that. And we'll, we'll announce this, but it's just something to change the, the worldview of people being very grumpy right now and kind of negative, especially music mm -hmm. fans. I can't get tickets. They're so expensive. Well, we've got a fun way you can do it. So that's the, the Willy Wonka sort of theme there, the marketing time involving Miss Taylor Swift. I love it. It's a fantastic promotion. And I, I love the way you're taking just exactly what you're talking about in the book. You're dealing with disruption, but you're turning it positive. And I absolutely adore that. That's that's fantastic. We will absolutely put links down below to everything needed to apply and, and get in the contest. Uh, Tony, you have my word. We're going to even try to get this edited since we pre-record. We're going to try to get this edited faster, possibly even get it released a week earlier than what we were anticipating to try cool. to get it out there to give everybody as much time uh, because this is just really cool. Uh, not to mention, I mean, Willy Wonka in Indiana, I got to go see that guy. That sounds cool. Uh, well, we made golden tickets up. So, like, oh, we have tickets. I love it. Uh, we don't want to get sued. So, these are these are public domain images. We put them on golden tickets. But, no, Mark Turner is fun. Um, he, he's actually, to give him some credit, been doing this a long time. And he's, he's a little crazy like me in a good way. He's opening a dinosaur park museum oh, cool. like a year from now in South Bend. So he's very visionary. He's kind of like the Walt Disney of the Midwest, I call him. And he's just very, very fun. He gets it. He likes to put a smile on people's face. And when I pitch the idea, he's like, get in the car and come down and let me see this. So I did. He's like, we're in. So it's, it's a lot of fun to have some support. Oh, I love it. That's great. That is great. So we will put the links in to buy the book to get all that. That will we'll take care of that. One more question I want to ask, because we call this the 91 day podcast on purpose. Uh, and knowing again, where we're at, things we've talked about with un uncertainty in the future. I think that a lot of people are also going to be looking at either starting a side hustle, starting a business, maybe reinvigorating their business, whatever it is. And I thought it'd be a lot of fun to talk to business experts like yourself and say, all right, Tony, if I gave you a thousand dollars, 
You get to keep your 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 house and all that, so you don't have to worry about shelter and food. But I give you a three months, which bla- turns out to be ninety one days, to build a business yep. that's making ten grand a month. What what would you do? What would Tony Rubleski do in the first ninety one days, knowing that you know I don't have credit cards, I don't have a lot. Anybody can do a garage sale and come <laughs> up with a thousand bucks. It's kind of stealing from Dave Ramsey's theory, but you know if you had that thousand dollars and you said, all right, I've got ninety one days to start a business and be generating ten grand at the end. What would you do? What might that look like? Just you know, kind of an outline of the thoughts of what you might do, Tony. Well, it's a profound question, Jonathan, because. It's hard for me to erase, you know, now 18 years of being self-employed out in, in my own internal yeah, bias. And so the first thing I would do is probably say, don't spend the thousand dollars immediately. Okay. It doesn't, contradict, it doesn't contradict that you want to be cautious and go after it, but I would do some research. The first thing I would do is say, what types of businesses can I make if I had to, you know, within three and a half, four months, make $10,000 a month research. And Mm -hmm. I would research for probably a good three or four days saying, okay, how do we find an industry that can do that and scale that quickly? And then I would narrow it down and say, okay, I found that I kind of want to do, because if you don't have an interest in it, it makes you all kinds of money, uh, your motivation's not going to be there, Jonathan. You might say, I'm not going to go back to, you know, whatever. I tried the side hustle, but it's not for me. So my time is more valuable than the thousand dollars, honestly. So do the research. Next couple tips that I would do that are a little unconventional. I would join my local chamber of commerce and say, hey, I'm starting a business. What are some resources you have available to help me out or what can I contribute? Um, To me, chambers of commerce, it's a great way to meet the right people. You can network. You've got to be seen out there and you're going to generate people asking, what does your business do? Uh, Tell us more about it. We did an event recently uh, a couple months ago in Traverse City. I joined the chamber a few months in front of the event and I was amazed. We did a ribbon cutting. They promoted our announcement to all the chamber members and several people that I knew in Traverse City said, hey, we kept hearing about you when you joined. We saw that they were promoting you. So that helped me to have more doors open when I called on people because they'd heard about us because the chamber helped uh, build credibility. So if the chamber dues are affordable within that thousand dollars, I would strongly consider joining the chamber because the connections and they can refer you to people that are legitimate and aren't going to rip you off. So that's another tip. The other thing is this. I would look for someone that's best in class in the industry that, or product or service I decide to market that's crushing it. And here's a little bit unconventional. I would try to find someone that's maybe regionally doing that where I could find them to do, hey, can I take you out to lunch? Name your favorite restaurant. I don't care if it's $100, $200. I want to pick your brain over lunch because I'm starting out, I'm going to build this business. I'm not trying to freeload off of you. Or I'd say, Hey, do you charge for an hour? If I, you know, for a consulting fee, and I would pick their brain for an hour. I'd shut up and I would take as many notes. I would record that interview and follow what they tell me. Someone's already built a business that you're trying to achieve. You want to model the best in class, Jonathan. And Great advice. Maybe if it's some of your, your, these local companies that get a little defensive, um, then maybe you look outside your region, you find somebody on a Google search, say, hey, I know you're in St. Louis. I'm looking to do what you do here in Michigan. Um, I, I've joined my chamber of commerce. I have some people that are already interested in it. Because is there any way that uh, resources you recommend to me or a way you could help me? And I don't mind paying you for an hour of consulting, but I've done that over the years when I started my companies. I've met, went to mentors, lunch, I bought their books. I paid for coaching at $250 to $500 an hour, Jonathan. Now, again, with $1,000, you've got to distribute that and be very judicious as uh, how you're going to spend the 1000 But there are creative ways you could piece together several of those strategies that just advocated to get you out of the gate rapidly. And maybe it's not $10,000 at month four. Maybe it takes you six or seven months, but you're scaling that business with a good foundation. You're getting the right coaching and mentorship. You're joining the local business community. Or if your business is, is not geographically bound, Maybe look at one of the trade associations of the product and service that you're in to join that so you can get active and learn from the association that represents your product and service at a much larger level. So those are my my quick examples of what I would do. Great advice. I think, you know, and I love the out of the box thinking 
Uh, like you, I'm a huge fan of finding somebody that can teach us something and asking mm -hmm. to take them to lunch. I've been amazed in my career how many people that normally I don't think I would have had any opportunity to, to talk to gave me that time because I asked, one, that, that in and of itself, and two, because I asked to buy him coffee or lunch. Um, yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've had people that do charge $500 an hour or more for coaching that let me buy him lunch for $27 and gave me personalized one-on-one -on -one advice uh, for that well exceeded what that, that value was. So great oh, advice yeah. all the way around. No, I love it. I love it. Thank you. Tony, as, as we wrap up, I know there's a lot going on for 2023. 20, what advice would you leave for the business leaders that are watching this podcast as they head into 2023? 20, 20, what, uh, what final piece of advice would you give them? Um, twofold here. Invest more in your best customers and your staff. Um, to, to keep cutting corners, there's only so much you can cut before you start to take off limbs with the business. So allocate dollars into investing more in your, your customers that spend with you the most and thank them for their business. I, I am shocked, Jonathan, how much I do business with different insurance agents, products and services. I never get a Christmas card, a thank you card. It, it's never even like an acknowledgement I'm even there. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big believer that your best customers, if you make more offers to them, if you thank them genuinely, you ask them, hey, who can you introduce me to? They'll bring you to more business. Um, same with your staff. The more you invest in, hey, um, we appreciate you, show it. Send them to training. Make training options available. Maybe it's tuition reimbursement. Maybe it's um, continuing education that you provide. Um, for example, <clears throat> my partner, Linda, her company has benefits that I'm sure they're almost as good as look. I mean, they reimburse for health if they work out. They have up to $75 a month for this. They have Affleck. I, I they really put up where a lot of companies say we we believe in our employees. Her company is just crushing it here in West Michigan because they're acting almost as if they're a huge, huge firm. I think they're about 50 employees, but they treat their employees so good they never want to leave. Guess what that does to morale? It increases morale. It makes the customers happier because they're like, wow, you're kind of like you're fun to work with and you guys don't leave all the time. So it shows safety. Um, so again, my bias in the interview is about training, 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 continual improvement of your team. And if you do that, your customers are richly rewarded on the other side of that. But a big shift is you're going to see is if there are customers that are, you know, wasting a lot of your time or they're really chintzy, they don't see your value. You need to let them go. You have to mm -hmm. let them go next year. Someone listening might go, oh, my gosh, she's telling them he's advocating firing your clients. Yep. Certain clients have to go, Jonathan. I'm doing the same thing at year end as we plan for 23. We have new clients coming in via referral that pay for value, that are excited. We have some current clients that want to continue on. And we have some right now that are getting scared. And I'm not judging them personally. I'm just saying, hey, we have to watch our time very carefully and work with the vital few that we are most best suited for. Not everybody. Oh. So. Again, beautiful advice and, and super, super sound. Um, this has been a ton of value. I, I just can't can't thank you enough for your time, Tony. I know you're busy. I want to encourage everybody, the moment you're done watching this podcast, and I mean this in all seriousness, go read Tony's book. Go buy it. It is the best $20 investment that you're going to make. And you may end up winning some chocolate, too, and, and maybe even tickets to Taylor Swift. But better than that... <laughs> As Tony go. said, invest invest in yourself. I do absolutely, like you, Tony, believe that's the best investment you can make. Invest in your team if you're a leader. Um, I learned this year very clearly, and it's it been 13 years in business, and I just learned it this year, that I need to watch out for my team more than I even do my customers. Not that my customers don't matter, but I can't take care of my customers if I don't take care of my team. And all the things you talked about from a training and motivation and all of that is so critically important, especially in today's marketplace, because if I can continue to keep the leaders that we've got and the, the A players, we can do so much more for our customers and deliver so much more value. So yep. I'll leave you with this. Jonathan, thank you again for your work and, and the invitation is this. Um, one of the quotes from Positive Disruption 1, C.G. Ortiz, good friend of mine in North Carolina, he said, the best defense is a stronger you. Mm. It's personal development, 
could be me, could be Les Brown, could be a, a YouTube video, a TEDx, a course through a community college. Continue to upgrade your skills because then you're not you're not waiting around going, oh my God, I'm lose my job. You're gonna have more opportunities because you're more valuable in the market space. Also, you're not you're not kind of coasting. Those that coast next year or barely get by are gonna find in certain companies if they do recessionary cutbacks, they're the first to go. I'm sorry, oh, but that's what so sorry to interrupt you there. No, totally agreed. Totally agreed. All right. Well, Tony totally. again, thank you so much. I'm so grateful. And I'm serious, everybody. Go over to Amazon, buy Tony's book. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.